Me. You don't need to be Wardell every single time. Yeah, totally. I think I think there's definitely in because maybe of Wardell and what he's shown to be able to do with TSM being one of the crowning, uh, you know, I suppose, but, well, the most successful teams in North America. Mm -hmm. I think it's really polarized that viewpoint of, of, of the Jet meta and what you're supposed to do with Jet. But just as you say, like this game is about tactics, it's about team play, and there's loads of different ways to have a huge impact without even taking shots with an operator. Just just your presence in certain positions and rotating around. There's just lots that lots of opportunities you can give your team and. We are seeing Shanks, you know, towing that line really effectively as you're describing and moving into bind where the win rate is really good for them against TSM. This definitely, as you said earlier, is going to make TSM fans sweat. And I'm loving that we're going to see Dig moving off of the momentum from the win of the last map into the attacking side of bind here and already leaning towards B early on in this buy time. We'll have to see exactly how the round will play out, though, as we do have Sabrosa looking for that early short B info. So we might get, a, a, we might get an early engagement here with Sabrosa. Yeah, it's looking like, you know, it will definitely happen here. He's going to curveball this corner, and if he goes in for the engagement, just to get information, finds one player, so saw Psalm. Uh, now, here's an interesting part about this, DDK. Look at this composition that Dignitas are running. They have zero flashes. So they have they have nothing really to try and force back. There's uh, we we see rays played uh, on this map often. Uh, no rays for Dignitas. Like they, I mean. Th this composition is quite interesting here versus the other side you have paranoia and you also have curveball for TSM they're also going to get the information uh, with the uh, sova like there's just I don't know. I'm not. I'm not too wild about Dignitas's uh, comp here. Yeah, there's like a really heavy reliance on the drone um, for clear clearance of positions, especially because another way that you could do that, as you said, is with flashes. Or typically, people love to run a raise on this map with the boom bot. Also helps to clear some of these close and, and trickier positions like U-Haul. And people, you know, if you don't have the breach, it feels like you do kind of need a boom bot or a drone. And I feel like so, you know, going to your point, there's a lot of pressure on Sam's drone to do a huge amount. And that's something that TSM know as well. But uh, we can see Sabrosa off that reposition from Hooker is going to find a few players. He's so patient. He's so calm. But he can only get one in this instance. Is it enough? It's all on Hayes to find out. And Superman will take him down. Superman on the Brimstone here instead of the, the um, Omen, as we saw in the previous map. Now, nice. Superman on Brim is exciting because he's a very, very good Brimstone. Uh, that's actually the agent that when we first got a glimpse of him when Homeless played on his hand. But I, let me just go ahead and scratch that for a moment there because Dignitas just got wiped away. I mean, yeah, it's nice to go ahead and talk good things about Dig, but when Wardell comes swinging around the corner and he just whacks them completely, TSM retake that one with authority. Yeah, that was that was that's very just pissed around stuff, isn't it? You know, you get the ability to not have to be encumbered too much by smokes and walls and all the rest of it, as there isn't that, that much utility going into a pistol, and you can kind of swing out there. And what else makes that look really good, especially with the sheriff? And I'm loving the sheriff on the pistol round. And you know, moving forwards, you know, Dig will certainly be disappointed by that. And th I think you know, as, as you know, we started to talk about, there are a lot of interesting points here in terms of talking about the compositions, the, the trade-offs that are made, the opportunity cost to select one agent over another, but right away we'll see Def in this eco rounds looking for the typical, I mean, we're going to see the typical cams and, and trips and so on and pressure placed by Def on the bathroom side of the map. And we get the B long control here, looks fairly usual. Drone and Sabrosa looking to try to swing with this. And it, actually we do get I missed the buy earlier. Yeah, on. I was going to comment on it. Dignitas do buy round two. They did that against TSM when they played last time, so not not a shocker they did it here. You're not really going to be expecting that. You're you're always just going to think, oh yeah, they're they're going to be running with classics. Nope, they buy bulldogs and they take that gamble. It's great too because especially when you know you're up against a jet, you know that at least one player is definitely trying to save for the early operator, so you get a pretty huge advantage. And also the Bulldog is going to perform better, if you're good enough, on those ranges. So it's going to be interesting to see how Dig play the 5v4 now. It's actually feeling very desperate here for TSM. There's the smoke to elbow, trying to recon down into the side. Drone has to defend close to the Spectre. That's where it performs well. That's a great 2k. Drone, always good for the multi-kills, and that's huge. That gives TSM at least a chance to recover here. The fact that you can always rely on Drone for two, it's it's absurd, right? I believe he has like a .86 uh, kills per round. Like he's, he's just always having some value that he's contributing to the team in such a way that you never quite can expect it, but when it does happen, uh, you're like, well, makes sense because it's drone. Now, as Wardell has 60 HP and this Sheriff outside of CT, you also have uh, Cutler lingering on the outside. They both swing at the same time here. He's just going to leave Som by himself. 
And that is just going to be short-lived. So the spike does go down. The gamble, though, unfortunately for Dignitas, does not pay off as they invest into round two. Oof. There's a world where they can force again. If they had had maybe got one more kill, I think there's an, there's an argument to certainly do it. But uh, it's it's I doubt I doubt it's going to happen. And this is very unfortunate for Dig because it felt like they had everything going for them. But this is like the only flash in on the server apart from Sabrosa's. And so that's uh, as you've highlighted, that's a huge advantage that TSM will have when it, when kind of going for these retakes and re-entering these positions. It's going to be really awkward for Dig. I like that they're running the Sage. I think Sage has huge value on Binds, but would it be nice to see like a Breach or an Omen in there as well? Yeah, it's, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be breaking down what this comp will be or how it's affected. Wardell gets two kills, maybe a third. Superman, though, does lock down the kill with the Ghost as Hayes has this angle held. It's going to be rather weakened off screen and we just switch to it drone gets one he's again he's good for two that just seems to be uh that's his brand at this point should be on his twitter uh, bio <laughs> he's like i'm drone and i'm good for two <laughs> superman doing everything he can to just try and hold this off maybe get another kill but sub rosa around the flank is going to handle that one easily they every single time it's come down to just two players for tsm dignitas even with we you know weaker guns or certain circumstances they manage to get kills uh or, or sorry dignitas managed to get kills against tsm uh they just can't seem to wrap up these rounds but now we're going to get some buys here for dignitas yeah and tsm's money is not very good given how many losses they sustained over these rounds despite winning them so if they were able to get off to a good start here and and pick up this round they're going to be able to switch things up and we have that all we might get this we'll get the sage ult combo oh no this could be good for three kills we might get the ice orb to the back of showers and the alt into showers possibly oh they're, they're waiting for it okay I've, I've we've seen that before um a couple days ago and it was phenomenal and i was really hoping we would see it here you just want to <laughs> so, see people burn that's basically yeah. it um, I, I respect that, though. And, and the reason why I love that is because as a guy who plays Brimstone a lot, I love that combination. It's a very typical combo, uh, but it's when it happens, it's so effective. Uh, now, though, as Dignitas, uh, with their better judgment, they decide to just wrap around A, come over to B. Shanks is going to finally come online here with a kill against Sabrosa, leaving Cutler and Wardell inside of the B site here to try and deal with whatever aggression would be coming out of Dignitas. Potentially, Wardell does get the mark against Shanks. He has been winning that battle fairly consistently. This is, this is a moment now where, you know, you would expect it to reset. As far as TSM are concerned, there's been pressure sort of on both sides of the map, and it's kind of hard to know exactly what Shanks was up to there. Is he just taking ground after the kill and just trying to make a play by himself, or is a team there? It's, it's really hard to know, and we'll get a drone down short A, so that's info for TSM. They're trying to work out what's happening. And with oh, two players in away. bathrooms and droning out of bathrooms, now it's super confusing for TSM. The bomb is, of course, the spike is towards the B side. Ooh. Can go through the telly if things go well towards A. Things are not going going well towards A, so that's going to mean that Poise will have to just commit onto this B-side by himself, and it's not looking too good for Poise here. The rotation from Sam is coming, but it's far away, and there's no way to get the spike down here, so it's just going to be a save. It was a, it was a good effort. I liked what they were trying to do there, but they needed to get an entry, sell it. They need to sell something towards A. Had Def gotten that kill on Cutler, the entire round looks different, right? They get onto the site, they wall off, they start to have a little bit of uh, protection there. Maybe win the round out, right? But TSM will manage to get a fourth round in a row here. They do salvage the op out of that, so they don't have to spend a lot of cash in order for them to be able to have a weapon that they can really use to a great effect here. Uh, you were comp we were talking about the money before. TSM breathing a sigh of relief now as their economy is certainly regulated. Meanwhile, Dignitas, this is a big round for them. They need to win this. Yeah, and it's, it's really unfortunate for Dig, too, that they, they did use the Orbital Strike, and it didn't really work out for them. And we'll see the Ice Orb going deep in. This is this is a great Ice Orb. This is one of the reasons why Sage is so good on this map, because this prevents any kind of a peak, which means now players can be really close, or maybe they're not. So it forces Sabrosa. He's going to pop the runner back. He's going to go straight Ooh. in with the double curve ball, trying to find a headshot. Sabrosa is really, truly nuts. Finds that kill onto Superman. will deal with the follow-up on the Poised. They wanted to try to punish Sabrosa on the run it back as he pops the collar, but... It looks like it will just really be decimation as far as Dig's lineup is concerned. And now it's just individual plays coming through from Def, and it's not going to work out for him either. So, oh, that's... Uh, this is rough. That's real rough. Yeah, this is really, really rough. I, I did like the idea to stop the aggression from long, but the issue is that Wardell was there uh, to complement 
the run it back Phoenix. So Poise was not expecting that at all. They only thought that they were going to invest just purely that one run it back Phoenix, who if he dies, it's not a big deal. So Broza goes back and it's going to be in a safe area. But instead, Wardell takes that shot, has Tailwind, can get out when he needs to. Uh, that round that was very expensive for Dignitas and costly for them throughout the course of this. And it really boils back down to that second round buy, right? They've never really had an opportunity to get that economy right. And since then, they've kind of just been getting snowballed here five rounds in a row. Yeah, it is starting to get a little, little bit out of hand. And we'll have to see if they can find a way to mix things up to find some success. That default thing isn't working for them right now. It's a nice opening kill from Sabrosa. Ever the menace is Sabrosa in that B-long position. His flash play is just fantastic. And I feel like, you know, having Sabrosa on one end and Drone on the other, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely a deadly force. And I think it speaks to a lot of the firepower from the rifles that we see out of TSM so consistently. I'm always looking back at those players and being impressed. And Dick here, it's all on Shanks, really. In terms of the firepower, he's got the ultimate here with the knives. It could have a jump and a float, maybe, to catch Sabrosa, but... Oh, there it is. And Shanks will nail him with that one. So 50 seconds to go, and there is a chance here for Dig now. There is some time, but Wardell with the angle on top of the truck here in U-Haul. Well, and that, <laughs> goodbye, Shanks. Good try. Maybe Wardell's going to look for another one. Ah, you'll get it with the Sheriff instead. Six rounds straight for TSM. They're going to let him know. All these old tricks, uh, you know, the, the attempts to pull a rabbit out of your hat has not worked out. What has worked is just pure aggression from TSM here on Bind. It's been kind of beautiful to see them break down Dignitas like this after what happened on Haven. Yeah, this is the start they needed, that is for sure. And it's a 6-0 now for TSM. Dick still with time and money to turn things around. We see a full buy from them. Shanks on the operator again, as is Wardell, as we would expect. And... In terms of the ultimates for Dig, they've got the res for Sage and the Neural Theft for Cypher, but that's about it. I love those arrows. It's so annoying. It usually gets one pulse off. But look how close Superman was to the smoke. Able to punish Haze as he walks through. And you know oftentimes that that arrow can be followed up by a play like that. And we get the trades coming through. This is perfect for Dig right now. Three versus three. They can reset it if they want. But they know that there's nobody else on the site. That's beautiful. A beautiful read of the A site play from Dig. And they're going to go for the spike plant immediately off the back of those two kills. Yeah, but they got to watch out for the flank from Sombrosa here, and that's exactly what Psalm is going to be doing, patrolling the backfield. Meanwhile, Shanks, he's going to have to do some damage up ahead and pay attention to this. So this is Psalm's job. Right now, Shanks, he has to worry about heaven. Psalm needs to worry about Rosa here, and that is just Rosa every single time, nailing those shots. Now the pressure is going to be popping up from behind here as Wardell inside of sight. Will get popped by Superman. Sabrosa looking to give himself an angle to try and get back inside. He'll get healing as it goes, but it won't matter because Poise headshot on Sabrosa. They hold this one down, and despite that flank coming in and looking pretty good, uh, they managed to hold off all the players coming from the defender side. So Dignitas, they can breathe a sigh of, uh, sigh of relief right now. Yeah, and it's, uh, one of the questions is, you know, when you see a big drought like this of rounds for Dig, struggling to find success, the question is after they do get some success is, is that success replicable? And if we look at where it came from, you know, Dig, they, they got the challenge from TSM. It's actually TSM trying to take the initia initiation towards that showers position true, with the true. recon, with the smokes and so on, and really forcing the issue, and they didn't win that battle. And that's how Dig got the round. So. Still, there's still no answers necessarily, but Dig will start off with that early bathroom's pressure. They want to, if given the opportunity, they want to start the round the same way as, as previously, and they're going to get that early bathroom's control. So the question is now, do they want to pressure the other side of the map, or are they just going to change the pace and just go for it? off of the back of this initial control. They have ults to deal with that too, right? They can actually put an orbital strike down on lamps to force players out of that, give them an opportunity to try and uh, take site control. Uh, they also have Hunter's Fury too. I would expect to see maybe some <laughs> ults taking place, a little drone wars as well, brought to you by your host, Chris Jericho. Uh, that's a reference for a TV show that maybe not a lot of people saw. <laughs> Battlebots, I think it was. Anyway, now though, uh, we have a waiting game here is the, the, the two drones, the rival drones on each side, trying to get some information. Wardell with a great spot here. And then Hayes pushed up ahead. So Shanks is going to make him pay for that. And Wardell drops down so Superman can profit off of that. And here comes the Hunter's Fury clearing out anything that will be taking place over on Lamp. So no one will be in that area. They can push that completely. Def is going to be on the other side. This is looking good for Dignitas as they try and just climb their way back into this game. Such an interesting look as well, you know, not having a raise on, on bind is, is, you know, not having any of those bombs. 
it's, it's looking really difficult here right now for TSM. Oh. Drone, though, as you said, always good for True. Two, my name's Drone, and it seems like it will just be two this time as well. Shanks takes him down, and it's not that much that Colors left here with as he approaches from heaven, but there's really the ability for every angle to be covered at this point. All the info is there for Dig. They've got the cam in bathrooms. They've got the trip up on the short position, the flank position. So they there's really no exit. way for Color to, to get onto the spike and, and deny the exits as well. So... This is really interesting as well because Alex, we we didn't see the orbital, orbital strike expended. It was just the Hunter's Fury was yeah. the was the ult of choice, and that was enough. And th that's really really cool to see. And and in terms of retake ability, I am curious what uh, you know how successful TSM will be in terms of their composition for the retakes. I, again, as I mentioned, you know when we see that raise so commonly, as well as the Sage, I feel like those are two. Uh, agents that are not with TSM's comp right now that are super helpful on retakes, especially mm -hmm. with the short plant, like as we just saw. Yeah, it's fair, right? Uh, raise well, the, the satchel to be able to remove wall uh, quickly to just delete it from the map is important. Uh, there's also just frag nades, boom bot. Like, there's a lot of value that you get from that. Rocket, you know, make a case maybe it's not as good as it used to be, but there certainly is some uh, benefit to be able to have that tool there at your disposal. Wardell goes in now instead as we look at this round for an aggressive peek at short. While that's going on, activity was taking place by Long, and now we're going to get some movement at Hookah, too. Now look at this. It looks like they're prepping an, a wall. No, they weren't. Okay, I thought that they were actually going to be prepping a wall. Neurotheft is out now. Here comes the Orbital Strike. Wardell has to tailwind out of there. So Hayes is going to be joining Cutler in the back by Elbow. I think they may have heard that. So the wall now is going to break off this action, and they're also going to get the coverage there from the that smoke in the backfield though it's drone he does deal some damage spike had not gone down quite yet that wall is going to be weak and his cutler look for him to just try and burst through there and pick off one or two players that might be unsuspecting of that movement oh no this is looking very scary oh is so close to connecting some of these shots and now Hayes will go down as well towards elbow all the ground is being lost here and well systematically done. one by one they'll all fall and that was a nice little set piece coming out from Dig. Again, you know, throwing out something very different, a really early timing, hitting a set piece on the B site. We see that classic, classic play with the, I really like the Sage Brimstone combination. When you're entering the site, you get the, the smokes going on the side. We've got the Orbital Strike back site. And on Elbow, there is the Brim Smoke first, and then the wall happens afterwards. And the wall prevents anyone from pushing from Elbow through the smoke, but it also allows you to go on top of the wall. You get a double peak, a double elevation peak on and Cubby. you see over and them, but they don't see you necessarily. Exactly. You're protected from, from the Elbow position, but then you can one-way Elbow as well. But, so, good. so there's just so many ways to play that. It's a great setup. Another bathroom's uh, uh, a contention here yeah. from both sides as well. I know that I was a little critical at the beginning of them not having any flashes. I am liking what I'm seeing so far, although I do think they have a lot of work to do. They, and, and they also are going to be reliant on ults. Like, now that they don't have Hunter's Fury and Orbital Strike, like, what do they do here to try and take control of sight? TSM is playing forward positions or getting aggressive. And, oh, that's actually a big kill from Def. But this goes back again to that last round that they won. It was Hayes that got aggressive, and TSM, they paid for that dearly by losing that first round to Dignitas. So perhaps we could see shades of that again here. Yeah, this is a pretty difficult situation if you're TSM. You have some decisions to make. Do you want to play retake and not play for any information? Well, they do have Cypher. They do have... Uh, they do still have a Sova, so they can get that mid-round information, and that does allow you to play more passively. Uh, passively allows you to play these 2-2 setups a bit more easily, but it is still obviously a rough spot, because you know right now that Dig are gathering up to hit something in numbers, and we can see that it's going to be that B player again. They have the Brim the, and, the, and, uh, and the Sage as well to basically run similar shenanigans, but just minus the Orbital Strike, Shanks and we'll Dell. Wardell's going to do everything here. Great pick from Wardell. Escapes, drops the smoke, and Sabrosa's holding down Hookah. It all comes down to Wardell and Sabrosa, but they're extremely good at this game, Alex. So they might just be able to make this happen. Wardell still alive, still kicking, still dodging, still delaying. And surely the rotation's going to come in soon. Yeah, that wall actually worked out very well for Wardell because he was just able to play that corner. And if you're going to try and challenge him, he's going to win that fight every single time. This round is basically going to be null for Dignitas. They will uh, stop this great run that they managed to put together, uh, uh, TSM, stopping Dignitas as they got three in a row. Finally, TSM managed to put one on the board here. And you know what was missing there, Alex? 
a flashbang yeah, of any flash, kind. If they a had lear, anything, a curveball, a know, paranoia would have forced that anything, back. Any of the, any of the above. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Because even would've right there, right, you, you put a wall down to stop Wardell, but then now you just give Wardell yeah. additional coverage. So, okay, thank you so much for the wall. I'll go ahead and kill your team. Thank you so much. And you, <laughs> you need to, like, contact for as long as possible before, like, get everyone close to that position, and that's why the flash is really the most ideal and only real true answer to doing that safely. Wow. Well, that's going to be 7-3 for TSM. Dig mixing up the pace again and hitting that A-short position really hard and fast here. But, oh, this is looking pretty pretty desperate in terms of getting slowed by that utility. They don't get a pick. They do expend some of the defensive utility, but they're just going to have to run all the way back to B here. And they don't know what they're running into right now. Yeah, that's right. But they do know that Wardell's not going to be located there. And, and, and at the very least, that will be fine, right? Like, they're going to have that, uh, that, that, not that worry that the snipe will be there. They can also cut off elbow. So Broza will have to make a play as they start to make some clears happen. There goes that wall to try and stop any of that aggression that could come out of elbow. Spike is now down. This is going to be a big round here for Dignitas. The wall has been chopped down. Sabrosa still lingering about. You got Cutler, Hazed, and Wardell in the back on defender side. And joining them in a little bit will be Drone here. is going to be the first one to go in for the engagement, or at least I thought so, as Wardell was going to be the one to find the connection first. Now that Wardell with Knives out can actually play spoiler here for Dignitas, but some more kills are starting to come through as Wardell and Drone, they managed to secure themselves a few kills. Now the swing is out. Wardell gets four out of that one, and they still had one more teammate alive for the trade. That is going to be very clean. And very, very well done by TSM on the retake. That was that was actually an awesome opportunity for Dig. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it was the plan to try to send it up short and to rotate back. I can't imagine that it would necessarily be. It's just kind of, it's like an if statement. It's like if we get the opening entries, of course, we're going to commit to the site. But they do decide to go very quickly back to B. And TSM had that full commit on the rotation, so it offered up an opportunity. But... Again, it, it is a struggle. It feels like holding onto sites and retaking. It feels like a lot of this comes down to gunplay and good spacing yeah. because of the way that we have the agent compositions for both teams. What a game this has been. You don't know what your team or your opponents are going to be picking, but you always know that Wardell will have that op in his hand. And he starts his round off against Sam. So as he dies there, that puts him within, I think, like one of his Hunter's Fury. Uh, and uh, Poise is at one for the res. Now we'll actually get the res here. So Rose is going to push this one aggressively, get control of that. Spike is down. Def and Superman are going to have to make some magic happen here within Hookah. I just don't really see a world where that will be possible, given that all these angles are covered. They have the spike. They know where Superman is now. Only player alive is Def. And while he is a phenomenal player, you're asking a lot for him to try and clutch up this 1v5. He's just looking to stay alive as long as he can. Flawless for TSM as they close out the half. Yeah, great rounds. Dig definitely looks kind of desperate on this on that attacking side. Yeah, they looked like they didn't have a plan there. It, it really felt like the composition did let them down in quite a lot of instances. They just didn't have enough answers in some of, as we said, like some of the in a, denying some of the retakes and didn't have enough answers in terms of just having no flashes. It just it just creates problems. There's a lot of problems that they were experiencing in the mid to late rounds. And moving into this defensive side, I am curious, you know, how well they will do because we, if we go think back to Haven as well. Dig really shined a lot more on the on the defense than they did the attack. So there's still a chance for them to close this out in two, but it's going to, of, of course, be very hard. Yeah, I'm thinking about whether... Like, the win here is that they have a lot of stall, right? Uh, slow orbs. They also have mollies. They, they can... Uh, Dignitas, by the way. They, they can actually uh, play around this here, right? That That's going to be their plus. Uh, this is a good or a decent-ish composition, I would say, for the defense now. They'll get information. They can let uh, Shanks do his thing. And Shanks playing his aggressive position here on long is quite nice. He's just trying to tag and see if he can get some more information. But he has cleared this, so you know that they're not necessarily going to be playing this angle. Going for this flank, too, I would imagine that TSM would be aware of this. I like the U-Haul setup here. It's a very safe way to play just two players on the side, and they know what's coming, the oh, rotation, man. but the the dodging there from Wardell was stunning as he takes down Superman, leaving a very dire situation for the remainder of Dig. As Poise looks over and only sees, well, nothing. All the line of sight has been obscured, but Shanks, he can still maybe, especially with that kill, do something here for Dig as he creates opportunity and distraction that should allow Poise to get out as well. With that ghost, very important at these ranges especially. They saw him. 
It's a real chance here, Alex. Yeah, they saw him actually drop down. The Paranoia is going to be pretty big for them. Slow Orb on the opposite side, too. Oh, and they're not going to expect him to be pushing to Slow Orb here. Y you would not actually think that because he was so deep inside. Now he's going to wrap around, get this first kill. It's going to be 1v2, though. Quite the effort that he's going to have to make here. Shanks, the new pickup for Dignitas as he runs right into Wardell. This is actually going to be pretty winnable here. Tries to tag it, but he's anticipating the push from the showers. The thing is, though, Drone is going to be right behind him, and he's going to bail out of this one. There's no way that he wins out on this battle. And Drone will actually take the death. Both players would take the death because you'd rather get the ult point there instead. Yeah, good effort from Shanks. Almost made it happen. But it is 10 to 3 in favor of TSM. They're doing a great job here on a map which statistically, as we as we highlighted, doesn't look too good for them. But so far, it's looking like Digger's having some problems. And given how few rounds they have, they need to immediately get the ball rolling here on this defensive side. Mm. I'm not sure how that's going to look just yet. You'd, you'd want to see them taking the initiative, but we'll have to see you know, what TSM are doing at the beginning too. If TSM play extremely passive, then they, can, you know, they can't just run into that. So. Smoke there, pick up of the orb. Superman really wants to build that orb puzzle strike. You can't blame him. It's so good. And he doesn't have a lot of time to do it as well. That's the other reason why he's going for that. You know, kills that he gets will be great, but the rounds are just going to continue to tick on if they uh, go in the favor of TSM. And then before you know it, it's game over. Som does try to push out and will be punished for that one by Cutler. Uh, noted here, if they don't buy this round like they did before, uh, they don't take that risk. Uh, that they had at the beginning of the game. I think they felt a little bit more comfortable being able to do that. Sabrosa, though, oh dear, he's at 7 HP. And the <laughs> drone just hits him with a little tag team action there from the right side. That's unfortunate. Uh, TSM now 11-3. This continues to look very, very good for TSM. Yeah, it really does. I, I like Stig's play there. They, they go for the aggression, four players towards A, and they, they see that they see a uh, cipher, and so that in such a passive position, it's like, well, okay, everyone else is clearly going towards the other side, um, as cipher is so often the lurk. But you know, moving into the gun round, this is really, this is this is it. This is this has to work. And as far as you know, Digger concerned, they're actually in advantage on the firepower because they're up against so many specters, and they're going for a huge swing out here towards short B control. Love this, Wardell. Oh, we're trying to punish him badly. He doesn't have the operator just yet. Working with the Phantom. In fact, he is the best gun on the team. Everyone else is Spectres. And now the question is, what do Dig want to follow this up with? Because TSM are responding. They know there are so many players towards that position. They're just taking bathrooms for free. They're going to walk or try to walk into this A site. Shanks on the operator could cause some damage, though. Shanks is going to have to be the answer. Gets one kill on Cutler. He's going to cut them off here, but one player did manage to make it through, and he was not aware of that. Sabrosa will just charge right into Shanks and manage to land that shot. Wardell with the only rifle on this team, and now Sabrosa is going to trade this one out. This is this is dire here for Dignitas. They need to win this round, but they don't have the numbers to do it. They also don't have anything to work for them on the entry here. Sabrosa, he's going to use that run it back. They have to charge this. They have to charge this, and they have to kill him instantly here. But Sabrosa is going to get one. He gets two. Oh, no, and they knew they they needed to push that, but Sabrosa manages to do this while this is going on, though. Def, he gets onto the spike. Oh my god, no, he can't do it. It's match point for TSM, but Def was so close, just hoping that that distraction was simply going to be enough. Oh boy, match point, TSM. <laughs> that was so close. What? That was just a cluster uh, if, of disaster. If we didn't have the whole hands, I think he gets that. That's actually True. so insane. Oh, wow. <laughs> This is a this was a great initial set of Shanks from this shot, because and it's because of the aim punch. So Broza dinks him, and so I, I actually imagine without the aim punch, I think Shanks hits that shot. And dude. he gets hot hands because he kills these two players here. Oh my god! And then he roasts death. Oh, my oh god! <laughs> Insane, but into the next round. This could be it. This could be the death knell if signing off for Dig if they aren't able to find a way to win this round. They don't really have that much equipment to work with. They do have the jet ult though. So Shanks really again the focal point of this round. And Dig, he's gonna get flashed immediately. They don't realize that he is here. At the right click though, if he's able to reset afterwards. Oh no, Sabrosa annihilates him and with that, maybe they have annihilated the best chance for them to come back in this round. Superman still has something to say about it with that Bulldog from Heaven, but TSM right now, they have Got so much position. <laughs> oh my god, back-to-back -back rounds, throw it back. That is so <laughs> impressive, man. But the spike is going to go down. TSM, they have the advantage. It's only going to be Som, the last player left alive. He's looking all over the place. Chicken with his head cut off. And that is going to be Dignitas taking the game here. And what a match this has been so far for TSM versus Dig. We're going to be going to a game three. Absolutely, Color. He's uh, he's just relieved at this point.
that was a that was a crazy game, and it's uh, it's, it's sad to see that they couldn't find yeah. find their footing more in in that matchup. You know, you've got to give uh, give it to TSM again. TSM between Sabrosa and Drone. The, when their backs are against the wall, the firepower that those guys have, it just always seems to be that X, that X factor that allows TSM, even if they've been figured out in other ways, to keep them in the running and even just take the lead. Yeah, and I think that, uh, look, we're not going to sugarcoat it. I, Dignitas comp just sucked. I, I was not into that at all. He didn't have flashes to try and hold them back. He had nothing to try and force them back either, right? They were just able to freely go on to sites because they were able to just blind them and they had nowhere that they could possibly go. Uh, obviously, there were a lot of things that Dignitas can learn from that.